Hey guys, what's going on? Sean here. Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's been a while since I posted. Uh, I had to go on another break because I was so busy trying to figure out like the blogging side of things and working on my Amazon business. But now I uh, outsourced a lot of that, you know, systematized it. So now I have a lot of time to get back on YouTube. So I want to start creating new videos again, hopefully one video a week. So good to be back. And in this video, I want to go over low content publishing versus high content publishing, which is better. So if you enjoy these kind of videos, please make sure to leave a like to show me that you enjoy it and also subscribe for new videos to come in the future. And let's get right into the video. All right, so I want to start by talking about what is low content publishing. So low content publishing is basically if you publish like blank journals, notebooks, uh, activity books, which includes mazes, coloring books, puzzles, Sudoku, and also, you know, some riddle books and also word, word games, jokes, books, and those kind of things. Basically low content publishing is where the content of the actual book is fairly low, or sometimes there's really no content at all. Like when it comes to journals and notebooks, it's literally just a blank page with lines on it. So just as an example, what, a potential low content book would look like is like this one, right? This one is all notebooks where it's literally just a um, sketchbook. So it should be blank pages. And so the only thing that's different from your book to others is the book cover or a little bit of design in the interior pages, which as you can see here, um, there's some cute designs around it, but it's pretty much just a blank page. It's super easy to make. All right, so now let's talk about what is high content books. So high content books are full length uh, books, which includes fiction books and, and also nonfiction books like how to do something, memoirs, biographies, and also like how to guides. And uh, I don't really think you need an example for high content books. It's pretty much every single book that you see in bookstores. So what is the pro of uh, publishing low content books, right? Because a lot of people get into low content books and one of the major pro is that it is free or very cheap to make. So even if the book flops, you know, if it doesn't do well, then it doesn't really hurt financially. So that's like one of the biggest pros when it comes to low content books. It's also easy to make yourself or outsource um, because it's literally just sometimes it's just blank journals. So you make the cover on Canva for free and then you get blank pages with lines on it and you're done. You know, even if you're doing like a little more content, uh, like adding mazes to it or puzzles, it's very easy to hire someone for cheap to make those kind of illustrations. Another big benefit that I see is that it doesn't require you to be fluent in English. So people who are not native English speakers, you know, it's hard to make high content books because you have to make sure the quality of the writing is there. And if you don't speak the language yourself, then it's very hard to check. So with low content, you don't have that. And that's one of the biggest benefits. And lastly, another huge benefit, of course, is the amount of money you make. Um, you can make a lot of money when it comes to quarter four, especially. Uh, which is like Christmas time where people buy low content books as a gift to their family members or friends. I've seen a lot of people where they're making a couple thousand dollars a month from low content throughout the year. And all of a sudden they're making tens of thousands of dollars uh, in one month just in Q4. So yes, you can definitely make a lot of money with low content books. Now, what is the low content publishing cons? So the con is actually exactly the same as the pro. Since it's free and easy to make, everyone wants to do it and everyone is doing it. So because of that, there's a lot more competition, a lot more saturation and very obvious keywords and those kind of stuff. You also cannot upload your book to Ingram Spark. They recently made a changes where they don't allow low content books. Uh, don't quote me on that. I think it's either they don't allow low content books in general or they don't allow notebooks and blank journals. Uh, and maybe they still allow mazes and a little more higher content, uh, low content books. And you can't do draft to digital, at least for the ebook side. You also cannot change most of your low content books unless you have like a joke book or riddle books uh, to audiobook because it wouldn't make sense to translate mazes into audiobooks, right? It's impossible. And sometimes, uh, even as an ebook, you know, joke um, mazes 
puzzles, those books cannot be sold as an ebook. So a lot of times you're basically creating something just for one format, which is the print version. And if you've been publishing for a while, you know that sometimes a book can flop on one format like an ebook or a paperback, but sometimes it can explode as an audiobook. Or if you put it up on, like it doesn't do well at all on Amazon, but you put it up on Draft the Digital and some, somehow it starts popping. Or you put it up on Ingram Spark and it just explodes. So you wouldn't really have that kind of diversity uh, or diversification with low content books. So personally, I don't do a lot of low content books. I've done about five in my lifetime and they all did pretty well. They're not doing well right now. You know, this was about two years ago, so they obviously slowed down. But at the time when I did it, it did pretty well. And uh, the reason why I don't do it is because high content books for me is doing really well. But if you would do low content books, this is what I would recommend. What you need to consider is that you cannot just spam the same books everyone else is publishing. This is pretty much the same with high content books or fiction books as well, or nonfiction too. You can't just do the same thing everyone else is doing and expect to make money, right? So the obvious keywords that you can think about, like the unicorn, you know, whatever that I just showed you, you it's already saturated because everyone else is doing it. You have to know how to find untapped keywords um, that nobody else is going into, right? And you need to also invest a little more time or a little more money. Although a lot of the books you can create for free, that is what everybody else is creating as well. So those are the ones that get saturated immediately. So you have to be able to differentiate yourself. You know, how can you make your books better than your competition? How can you stand out? And usually it's spending more time learning graphic design or something to add, you know, more cool effects, uh, cool designs on your pages or make your cover stand out a lot more or you wanna spend a little more money to outsource to people who can do that for you if you don't wanna learn it yourself. A good example of this uh, in uh, say, let's do like activity books, like puzzle books, for example, um, you have to be able to differentiate yourself by making the puzzle more complex or adding designs around the puzzles or you know, just simply adding the number of puzzles that you include in that single book, which will increase the production cost. So with low content, I believe the, the way to succeed is to balance the quality approach and also the quantity approach. Because one of the biggest benefit with low content is that you can take the quantity approach and you can publish a lot of books without really losing a lot of money. Um, so you want to still do that because I think that's, you know, very, very powerful to do and just having this uh, big portfolio of books under you, but you also want to make those books last, obviously, because after a while, when you start publishing, you will know that books dies off slowly and you get tired of that, right? You want to make passive income here, but you basically just created a, a new job for you because you publish a new book and it slows down. So you publish a new book to maintain the income and it slows down again. And you don't want to do that. And that is, uh, by publishing quality books, that is how you prevent that from happening. So now let's talk about high content publishing. So this is what I do with nonfiction, but typically you can make more money from one book than low content, typically, because sometimes low content books outperform high content, but typically high content makes more. And there's less competition since everyone is switching to low content right now. So a lot of people are leaving high content books. Um, so less competition there. And you can also upload the same book as ebook, paperback, hardcover, audiobook, so different, many different formats. Uh, you can also upload it on Draft to Digital, other ebook distributors, as well as Ingram Spark, ACX for print and audio. So, again, this is something that I mentioned earlier about diversifying your distribution and the potential to make money. And there's easier, it's easier to build a brand and offer back end products uh, if you're doing nonfiction. Now, the con of publishing high content book is obviously the cost. So it can take um, up to $1,000 or more to make one high quality book. It takes time to make it because even if you outsource the cover design, uh, book writing, etc., it usually takes about a month for everything to, to be done. It takes time to make ROI. Um, because obviously if it takes about a thousand bucks, you know, the chance of you making $1,000 upfront in the first month of publishing is pretty low. Although I've done it many, many times, you know, if you're just starting, it's fairly low, right? It takes a couple months, um, to make your money back. 
And that's just, you have to look at it as an investment into your future. So, and the last thing again, is that you kind of have to be fluent in English if you're publishing English books, because how else are you going to check for quality of, you know, if the writer did a good job or not? So I really don't see any way around this uh, when it comes to publishing high content books. Now, considering all that, this is the approach that I recommend. So I'm not actually a hater of low content book, although I don't do it. I don't teach it. I actually think low content publishing is, you know, a great way to start making money and you should definitely consider doing it. So this is what I recommend. If you have the capital, start with high content. If not, if you don't have the money, then start with low content publishing until you save the money, then start high content with that extra money that you made. Um, either way, the best, most efficient approach that I think you should take in publishing to make money is to build one high content brand. So you don't want to create multiple high content brand. You just want to create one pen name in one niche and build that brand uh, very deep with high content. And while you're doing that, right, you're ordering your books and ordering your covers. And there's a lot of downtime that you're waiting for those to be delivered to you and you're not really doing anything. So that's when you want to fill that time with publishing low content on the side because it's free. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time and whatnot. So that is what I recommend. And I think that is the most efficient way. It's the most balanced way. And this is how you can get exposure to both low content, high content and do both of that. So hopefully that was helpful. And if you guys are looking to learn how to do low content or how to do high content for high content, I do have a free publishing course. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out for low content. I have a friend that has a low content course. It's one of the best low content publishing course out there. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below so you guys can check it out. He also has a free version of the course so you can get started with that. And if you like it, you can upgrade to the paid version as well. Mine is just free. So uh, if you want to do high content, you can check it out. But anyways, if you like this kind of video, please leave a like to again, show me because the more like I get, the more I know that I should make these kind of videos. So, and leave a comment, you know, anything helps for the YouTube algorithm so they can push this video to more people and again, subscribe for more videos. And so you don't miss out on the next one. And thanks for watching.